is still pretty damn good. It is. And actually, the bands have started to come through here. So let's go ahead and show you exactly what's going on on your screen and see who is taken away and who is picked up right away here. As we do have, looks like Gas Cat Superman being banned out on the side of Epsilon. And of course, on the other side, we do have Atomic Wonder and pretty similar bands to what we saw yesterday. Yep, and the Fat Man being banned out as well, the Gaslight Joker, respectable ban. See, it's that's what I love about him, because you can say the Fat Man, you, everyone instantly knows who he is. Well, he is the Fat Man. He is the, the number one Fat Man. And he is so annoying to deal with. And just, it's always a safe, good ban, in my opinion. And he's always been strong, and he continues to be strong no matter what happens in that top lane, no matter what you put up there against him. He just seems. Like, nothing can really phase him. I feel like if you would put... Okay, so this is something we haven't seen too much of in a crisis, except maybe in the early days. Lane swaps. No, we, we, we did see some. I think last time I was here, I think we saw some. And they were very interesting lane swaps. They were very unconventional. Wasn't it putting the the, the blaster top and yeah. we saw the marksman in the, in the Guardian middle? Pretty much, yeah. I think that was I think that was the basis of it. And then they kept they kept swapping throughout the game, actually. And then it sort of went back to the sort of normal meta that we'd normally see. But uh, very interesting to see. But I don't think anybody's going to be doing that at this, at this moment. I think everybody's going to be playing. Well, right now, this is your time to kind of show it. I mean, if you have anything hidden, you better bust it out right now. I mean, yeah. remember, two wins, you're through. Two losses, you're out. And this is for playing for quite a large sum of money. $27,500 in prize pool. $15,000 alone for first place. How much? 27500 Give me? That would be lovely. Um... I'm sorry, you're a commentator, you can't play. I know, but that's a lot of money. I mean, you're technically on the Dignitas roster, That's the international aren't you? final, right? Yeah, it's the international final. A lot of money. That is for, a for lot of teams. money. So definitely, if you have anything hidden away, you better bust it out right now, and you better just come out swinging. You don't want to lose the first game. You don't mm -hmm. want to be that you know one foot in the grave already. And we do see, it looks like Wonder Woman picked up here for Tavia and Epsilon. And we see Atomic Green Lantern and Mecha Wonder Woman picked up for H2K. Yeah, nice picks. And uh, I think everybody favors that Mecha Wonder Woman marksman than the, the, the gas bat. It's, he's always secondary in terms of that pick. So if you're always kind of a bit unlucky on the marksman. Whatever happened to Green Arrow? I don't know. There must we have been some We saw him every game, it felt like. And we never see Blue Beetle. Yep. We, we don't ever see Cyborg because of his lack of escape. We saw Atomic Joker yesterday, which was surprising. Yeah, but not going to happen today, surely. As, as Well, we've already picked the marksman, so it's definitely not going to happen. And Sando actually picking up the Sinestro. So it's going to be that mid lane. And Sinestro's actually been played quite a bit lately now in the mid lane. We've, we used to see Zatanna there, even some Catwoman every once in a while. Um, but typically Joker's always the one they, they you know you play. It's either Joker or Sinestro nowadays. Yeah, it is. And we called it pretty much Cry going with the Joker. So that'll be that matchup pretty much sorted. And uh, they're probably going to pick up the support now. So Yeah, I am surprised that Arcane Green Lantern, I was just about to say him, hasn't been picked up yet. Hovering over... Well, is he picking up for a jungle? But he's got... Atomic Green Lantern. We've seen so. support Robin before. Don't forget, Darky yeah. Hat did bust that out uh, in Season 1 Finals. And it's T-Spark, and he's obviously trolling. <laughs> That's why he's doing it. He's hovering over Robin for rea reaction. You're not going to get one, mate. And he wonders why we make fun of him so often. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Just pick the arcade Green Lantern. There we go. Well, good thing is we're on a three-minute delay, so he won't actually hear us trolling him. Um, lucky True. for us. And Nightmare Superman and possibly the Nightmare Batman from Jitsu as well. So that's slightly unusual as people haven't been really picking him lately. Well, you can say it now since it has been locked in. You can say it. Can I? Yeah, yeah. It's been locked in now, so it's okay. So I'll say it for you if you don't want to. No, it's okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll skip over that. But you, it's an interesting thing. you can't because he's picked. It is picked, but, you know... Dignitas have got to do something about it as well. Ah. Well, we'll see. I'll see how see? that one's going to go. Jason, you spoil it for everyone now. I oh. tell you one thing, and then you <laughs> just wreck it completely. Well, the thing is, the other two teams are already watching this game, so they can expect it as well uh, for this that's, one. So That's true. Uh, Nightmare Superman, going to see the Tyrone Monster picked up here. And it looks like Supergirl. Was pleasantly surprised with Supergirl, um, played by Jutsu yesterday. Did really well with yeah. him. Very, very well. And uh, see how the uh, Man of Steel actually counters with that. We're calling, well, he is Man of Steel, but not. Should be girl a woman of steel. of steel now. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't kind of make sense. <laughs> it's gonna confuse me. Okay, so let's let's take let's take stock of what's going on here. So it looks like we have Kim's playing one woman in the top lane. <clears throat> we have seen that before. 
Uh, we got Tabby support on Nightmare Superman. We got Gaslight Batman on Endless. We got Sander obviously running Sinestro Middle. Yep. And then Jitsu in the Jungle on Nightmare Batman. On the other side though, we have Clockworks on Joker. We have Souls on uh, Mecha Wonder Woman. Cry using the support Arcane Green Lantern. Um, T Spark. I'm assuming, yeah, running top lane. Yeah, since, yep. since he has a teleport with the AGL. And of course, Man of Steel Jungle. Mm -hmm. And you're going to ask me which team do I favor? No, I was going to ask actually which skin oh, do you, do you okay. favor between both teams. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, between the teams, uh, I'm going to say uh, Epsilon with the Nightmare Batman pick. It's uh, a little bit unusual. It hasn't been picked up for a while. See, that's the thing, right? Like, it has been played in a while. I it did get a lot of nerfs. Yep. But keep in mind, like, what if he fluffs it? Like, what if he depends on, like, an early gank that he doesn't get? Or That's not getting countered I, early on I in the jungle? Like, he could fall really far behind because of that. I think that that's the issue, and I think you're right. I think it, it works, providing that you can, you know, be that perfect game that you mm -hmm. need it to be. But we'll soon find out. I don't know how he's going to build or what, how he's going to approach that either. So this is a whole new experience seeing that Nightmare Batman again back in jungle. I mean, he had some periods where he was just playing in the top lane, and then the big nerf came, and pretty much nobody started picking him. I'm going to so have to actually ask you this, because I'm not too familiar with the spec client, but can we see what modifiers he has and such? Yes, we can. So let me just switch here. Oh, there it is. Okay, because yeah. I actually want to take a look at those really quickly, because obviously if he's going to be uh, picked, you've got to have something a little bit sneaky going he's, on. He's going damage at the moment. So, I mean, his modifiers are for Deathstroke's Claymore, which gives him extra wow, 10 he's damage. Full damage. Yeah, he's got extra damage on all of those items. So the Marauder's Knife's got extra 10 damage. So it's the Coda Blade, extra 10 damage. And uh, he's just going attack speed, attack speed, penetration, more penetration, and more attack speed. So, yeah, he's clearly going for some quick kills. Is that fair? I can't, see, I can't see any modifiers unless they're on HTK side. Oh, really? For me. Oh, yeah, it's not. That's interesting. All right, well, either way, Jutsu looks like he will be going for a damage-oriented uh, Nightmare Batman. That's something we typically haven't seen in a long time. He's usually been very tanky, so you can obviously ult in and then just kind of stay alive while the rest yeah. of the team joins the party. So he's going for full damage. He's looking for an assassination, it seems. Quite and possibly. And if we talk about protection, if he ults Joker, I, I, I fear that he might just get bursted down. The slipperiness won't really help if he if he gets locked down, obviously. Well, that Joker, actually, if he uh, if he's in the background, you know, if he plays his cards right, which he usually does, he'll be able to knock out that Nightmare Superman ultimate every time. But they have a lot, lot of lockdown potential with the Nightmare Superman and Nightmare Batman, and also that Wonder Woman coming in from Epsilon as well. So that's a lot of crowd control, really. And you don't want to be dealing with that. Yes, you definitely do not hear him. And it's a lot looser on the H2 side of things in terms of crowd control. There's not really any big stuns. I mean, Mr. Punchy got the grab from Arcane Green Lantern. Yeah, I feel like if I feel like they've got um, a burst someone down comp where if they get the pull in, then they can comment the person backwards as well yep. and just completely separate them from the team, let in Mr. Punchy, and then that person will die, ideally. But to pull up a combo like that against a team who has some pretty good disruption out of uh, the Wonder Woman in particular, yep. and even the Nightmare Batman, it's going to be very rough to, to really make that team fight happen the way you want it to. It's essentially, they've got a perma stun, essentially. If they time their uh, abilities right, they'll, they'll kill one person guaranteed, providing they, they play it right and don't have that Joker lying about or that Arcane Green Lantern coming in with the Lantern or the Construct. But you know, maybe Atomic Green Lantern could get some lucky pulls. But Well, Souls actually already got very low in the bottom lane. Let's just force go back to base. We'll return here, it looks like, in just a few seconds. So a little bit of a lead here for Epsilon in terms of that. And not to mention, there's already a 500, 500 credit difference. Destroyer topside going to be spawning in here in just a few seconds. Where is this discrepancy coming from? I feel Oh, it's the bottom end. Look at that. 1,100 credits yep. for a gas bat up against 1,000. Like, that's 100 lead already, and that can really snowball a lane. Yeah, but the lane's pushed up, so they're backing actually here for the Epsilon guys. Going to regen up some health and then make their way back into the lane. Once oh, there's it a 300 credit difference topside. Oof. He, got, he did get a lot of damage. T Spark up there, maybe a little bit rusty. Not been playing that much. I mean, he's he's been murking. It looks like he played for Zed, but not playing for Zed anymore. I don't know why he got removed. I don't know the history there. But now he's uh, subbing in for H2K, or maybe he is a, more of a permanent residency with H2K right now. But we're going for the uh, top destroyer as well. 
try and get some vision up there, Epsilon, and they could get it bottom as well because they've pushed up pretty well in the lane. And we can see where the, uh, the tower is now placed down as well here, or abo uh, above that middle side, that middle lane. And it looks like Supergirl going to be heading down towards bottom here to maybe go for that destroy release if they need to pick it up here. As Tavi may actually get caught out here down towards the bottom side. But you can see the gank coming in the middle. That's Joker. No real chance for him getting taken down. Yeah, and it Ooh, seems like side. a fight is yep. breaking out down here. Bit of damage going to Tavi, but he's not going to be phased by it. He's going to back off and, uh, yeah, pretty much not much happened there. Just a bit of damage onto Tavi, but in a good position to get out of the fight. And not enough real stopping power. To be honest, no crowd control. Well, Jutsu <clears throat> actually snuck his way through bottom side here, looking for Cry. Uh, obviously, Arcane Green, that's going to be a little bit tough to lock down here. But now, that gives the potential to go for the Destroyer. Yep. And that's what really matters here. And Supergirl is actually backing, so they're not going to be able to contest this. The Vision's all going to Epsilon. And that's really nice for them. That's well, Clockworks luckily found the, uh, the tower above oh. middle just now uh, by putting his own camera down. So he's able to clean that one up. At least minimalize um, that control. No. It's got a lot of map control already. Two, uh, two of these sort of surveillance towers down already. And pretty much, you know, it's going to be very, very difficult for any roaming ganks at the moment for uh, the H2K guys. So very much in favor of Epsilon at the moment for their next ganks. Yeah. A little bit of a slow game here, five minutes in. I mean, I say slow, but we're only five minutes in. I had to think that one through. Um, the Jutsu level four now. Levels seem to be pretty even across uh, both teams. And I want to know how Souls is going to do. If you think about yesterday when we saw, you know, Endless on Mecha Wonder Woman against Solus on the Atomic Joker, he really had a rough game. Yeah, but uh, Mecha Wonder Woman's a lot more flexible. You know, got, has great, good getaways, has good damage, and I think generally it's just much easier to play. You don't have to think so much about your positioning. And so you can play a little bit more rough around the edges. All right, well, it looks like Kim's will be going down or going back to base here on the top side. And we should keep in mind, you know, him yesterday, he was just a non-stop pushing beast when he was playing the Fat Man, just constantly shoving that top lane, taking on turrets by himself. The T-Spark, I mean, he's dealing with them pretty well. They're pretty close in credits, uh, considering the deficit that we saw earlier on. He's even shoving the uh, wave in as quick as possible. Over towards the bottom yet again, you can see Souls and Cry now. Looks like they're able to push out this lane a little bit. So the Destroyer won't be up for a little bit longer. Yeah. Just going to get some free farm down there as uh, Epsilon will be returning to that bottom lane. And Mana still, was he going up there for a gank on top lane? But uh, They were actually counter jungling a little bit. Okay. Yeah, T-Spark come down to uh, help out with that one, just kind of make sure nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to keep him away from level six, it seems. But this has also meant that Mana still has fallen a level behind. Yeah, well, Jitsu's already level six, and it looks like they're. They're going in for a rotation here, and maybe he's going towards mid. Raider Pit's actually been opened up as well, so both teams actually cameraing that up, being aware of it at all times, and Jitsu wants to set up for a gank into mid. And he's waiting around that stealth pad, but... Will Clockwork overextend just a little bit? He's waiting just outside that vision range of those drones in the middle. Mm, I don't think came down as well. Yeah. Oh, good timing. I, I, I don't something. know if he was seen Jutsu. There were there were no pings or anything like I that mean, to actually spot him out. I mean, he was pretty close to the to the lane, so he could have been spotted. But he, a player like his, oh no, Jutsu comes in with that lockdown. Here comes the fear. I think that was a little bit too early, but it's still going to secure the kill. Oh my God, the blink on nothing. He managed to find the escape and dodge that meteorite strike. Lots and lots of power ups coming in, but oh, slam down with the health destroyer coming in. Nicely done there from Epsilon. It looked a little bit rough. I mean, they outputted so much early damage, didn't really time out the stuns, and almost Joker got slippery there. And he almost, almost got, away. got away. He really did that. And I agree with you. A little bit of mistiming in their uh, in their CC there. That should have been an easy kill for them. But nonetheless, they still pick up the kill. They don't lose anyone, and they do continue to grow this lead. Now, looks like 1.3 thousand credit difference. Destroyers, when they come up, is what I'm really curious to see how the teams are going to contest, if anything. And will we see any potential Raiders? Right now, you just got to watch Jutsu. You got to watch for one thing with him. What's the cooldown of his ultimate? 70 seconds. And obviously, when that's off, he's going to be going in for another game. Yeah. He might even come in earlier, especially after basically securing that first blow and getting some additional credits. So it's going to be building up quite fast. And once Jutsu gets on a roll, he doesn't ever stop, it seems. He just seems very, very flexible in that jungle. And he's always got some form of map presence. And he can play anything in the jungle. Because, I mean, I remember playing against him in one game, and he was playing Aquaman. Yeah. 
and he completely wrecked our team. I, I hate to admit it. Yeah. That's yeah. That's pretty insane. And it worked. Uh, it worked out pretty well for him. But level seven now. And you can see on the bottom side. It's been very. It's been very back and forth. But I feel like Epsilon's kept this turret push for the majority of the time. You can see it's already down about half HP. Yeah. And they've they've been out putting a lot of damage onto the turret. Also onto Souls, really zoning him out. And they always seem to have know exactly what Souls is thinking or Cry in this bottom lane. That well, they can't really is, do anything. You have melee versus range yep. kind of in, in, in this one. And that's difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's just, just relying on Souls to really do the output damage as well as getting the last hits. And doing that can be difficult, and especially when that prisons come in and the vortex as well. Souls managing to just barely escape with that afterburner. Endless didn't seem like he was in a good position to actually get more damage in there and I didn't really see any batarangs coming out. Back it was a nice combo. Uh, actually, I think, I think he ran out of uh, will in the end from the uh, from the fight, but that was a close call because be Tavi ulted him, then he popped his across him and then just obviously was able to pull him back in again. But now Man of Steel coming down the bottom side, looking for Endless here, has his ultimate up. Yeah, and we got a TP in Man of Steel, gonna push back in to, oh, Clockwork going down in the mid as well. My director cam just took me there instinctively because he was low HP and the action dissipates in this bottom lane. But Clockwork getting attacked in the middle lane while that big fight was happening down at bottom. <laughs> and shoots his ultimate back on cooldown now. Yep. Uh, that's all it takes. I mean, that is a, it's a strong kill lane. Both of them have the CC to lock him down. They have the damage, and now with two kills under their belts, to make it that much easier for them to secure anything. I mean, if you time it right with uh, Jitsu and uh, oh, Sinestro, it's beautiful. It's like almost four seconds, five seconds maybe. You're not going to live. You're not going to live. Not. That damage output is huge on the Sinestro ultimate as well. And if anybody's near him and they're close to him when they're trying to save him, you could get feared out of it as well. And even more of a nightmare, really. Well, Clockwork's now at 3,300 credits up against the 3,600. And again, we're seeing those Marauder rings coming in. Indeed we are. Pretty much everybody's running that extra damage on them. Including Man of Steel. Or Girl of Steel, I should call him now. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, yeah, not a woman. Just a girl. I get it. Um, but here we go. So we have Destroyers. This top one coming in. Bottom one is only in as well very, very shortly. And we do already have Man of Steel there. So they realize they missed both Destroyers in the, uh, in the beginning. But now they're trying to contest it a little bit, trying to secure their own, trying to get a little bit of vision. But towards the Raider camera, we're going to see a fight breaking out. Cry getting very low on HP. He's going to go down from this one. that will be Endless picking up his first kill here of the game. That was absolutely really good play from Tavi there. I mean, what um, what Green Lantern tried to do there, he tried to construct over the wall and teleport to his construct, but he was locked down by that prison from uh, Nightmare Superman. Tavi timing it perfectly as he used that ability, so he couldn't actually teleport in time. And so he had no no chance of escape after that, and that was a really good gank. Uh, that is now the Raider going over to Epsilon here. The lead is starting to really grow. 4,000 difference between the two teams. 3,000 if I can count correctly. And remember, guys, this is only a best of one. Winner advances into the winner's side of the bracket. Loser drops down to the bottom. But obviously, both teams not going to be out just yet, or at least the uh, loser won't be out just yet, as they will have a second chance um, a little bit later on today here. But... If we compare, you know, the Nightmare Batman up against the Supergirl, Nightmare Batman's been working out. 1-0 and 2 here. He's looking healthy, isn't he? Looking very, very healthy. And he's already, already building up that Coda Blade. That's 50 damage on that Coda Blade, plus the attack penetration and 30 damage for the Marauder Knife as well. So he's outputting a lot of hurt right now. And will he continue? Will he get some tanky stuff? I'm sure he will eventually, but maybe no. In fact, he is going a little bit tanky with the Sword of Beowulf, so that's going to shield him from uh, some power damage. But also give him some additional damage oh, as well. Oh, Kim's midside catches the last one. That's going to be another kill coming in yet again. Kim's picks it up. Clockworks just getting frustrated, it seems, in that middle lane at 0-3 and three now from this. But we talked about the Nightmare Batman. We forgot to even talk about the Wonder Woman with the lasso, with the yep. ultimate, popping with the Sinestro combo again. You're just never going to escape, and they were just punishing him here. Yeah, with Nightmare Superman as well. I mean... They can eliminate one target every time with just the two ultimates from each of those players. And we have some fight going in here on T-Spark up top, and he's going to be locked down. That ultimate coming in from Jitsu, and he will fall down here, T-Spark to Jitsu. Nightmare Superman picking up another kill, and his hunger is everlasting by the looks of it. The thing is, 60% of the deaths, or 60% of the kills, have come in in this middle lane. Epsilon is definitely showing who they want to focus down, who they really want to 
kind of hold back in this and, and not allowed to get really fed and really uh, snowball-y. And now with the top turret going to be going down in a few seconds with the fight breaking on bottom side as well. It's Soul. not looking too good here for HDK. Yeah, Souls just going there, losing down, and losing his soul actually to Epsilon. And now so will Cry actually. Not great positioning there. Overextended in the lane and then he just decided to hunt them down. Sander coming in from the mid lane to help out as well. I mean, this is one of the first times we've actually seen Sander roaming around today. We saw it happen multiple times yesterday on the Sinestro. Um, and it's working out pretty well. He's now, what, 2-0-2, 5,300 credits leading the game here currently. And actually, he almost has more than, like, two players combined on the opposing team, one of them being the Marksman. So right now, he's got what, his Marauder Ring done, Kha'Zix Staff at two stacks. It's just going to be really rough. I mean, this game really revolves around snowballing. And yep. I'm not sure if HK can come back from this. Being 7-0 down, just mentally, that just seeing that number is terrible. It doesn't matter if you're like 2,000 credits behind, which they're unfortunately not. They're about six. Yeah. This is this is going to be tough. I Epsilon think... just seemed to be getting stronger and stronger, where unfortunately HDK haven't been able to make anything happen. Yeah. And getting those extra towers, the Raider as well. I think they've still got their EMP as well. Jitsu has it, and Jitsu's coming in for T-Spark here. Oh, and Sander he's... getting caught middle as well. And right. it will go down. So finally a kill for H2K. But T-Spark in a really bad position here. He's trying every Duke position he possibly can. Oh, and I think he's one. done it. That was a good one here. Jitsu looking at chase that ultimate in four seconds. He gets the slow. T-Spark should go down from this one in the end. He's using that extra slow with his ultimate. Oh, though. he got the range. The ultimate Nicely was up done. out of Jitsu, but he got the range away with that ultimate charge. It's a fantastic play out of him. It hurts me to say it, but he did play well for T-Spark. <laughs> and he will escape. And that does give HK one kill, and it's going to give him a middle turret, potentially. Maybe a second one as well. Tavi coming in to save the day, though, and the rest of the team have backed, and they are coming in fast. But everybody's going to exit out. Did What was just dropped there? Was No, I was going to say that was not the meteorite strike there, was it? I don't believe so. It was the afterburner effect from Mecha Wonderman. Yeah, the right that hasn't been taken down just no. yet. I was going to say, if they got that, that was very <laughs> quick. I didn't even notice. So In the, in the, uh, the Dragon Slayers versus Wolves game, I think we had enough for for many games to come of Leviathans and Raiders. But as you see right there, again, the ability to lock down one person and kill that person yeah, is completely there for They her. just did that under a tower as well. That was no fear. Just instantly annihilating Joker. And he's going to be feeling so much hurt with four deaths already. I mean, he's constantly been feeding, really, in that mid lane. And... I don't want to see. I don't want to say the word feeding. Well, he's been it's not, his, it's not his fault. Yeah. Like he's just getting constantly locked down. I mean, I guess in the end it can't be his fault because not having enough cameras down to like stop uh, Batman from coming in. But but when you play the Joker, you you just assume that you're safe all the time because mm -hmm. of that blink ability. It's so so useful. It's just a you wait for the right opportunity to use it, and you're pretty much guaranteed to save yourself. But against these guys from Epsilon. They're just not even giving him a chance to get any range or any positioning to, to use it effectively. And with the two combo stuns from ultimates each time, it's just, <laughs> there's nothing you can do, Jason, as you said. Quite right. I mean, he's, he's playing probably perfectly well for a standard mid Joker, but right now he needs to really be playing so much better. He's actually 700 credits behind, 600 now, which is not really that bad, surprisingly. You know, being one and four him. Obviously, if you guys are just joining us, this is the Season 2 Regional Qualifiers. And if you don't recognize the name Epsilon, that is because they're ex-Navi or ex-ASD-ASD. Yep. Uh, by Tavi here, as we can see. And, well, they did make it into the finals of the uh, Go For December monthlies. But they, unfortunately, were not able to play, so they had to forfeit that game. But this is, I think we're both agreed, definitely the favorite in this matchup. Epsilon, in our, in our eyes, should win. Yeah. It would be... Uh a very big miracle if they can uh, get out of this. And Sander actually caught in a bad position, leaps over, uses his ultimate. But here comes Jitsu, the ultimate, locking down Cry. Mecha Wonderman in the background. Soul's doing actually a bit of damage, but it's not going to be enough. And we have two down here for H2K, whereas only Sander is the only one to fall for uh, Epsilon. But Tavi looking really low because T Spark is going for the kill. But oh, the Vortex saving Tavi. Oh, he's going to be angry, T Spark. And now he's got to run away from two. Well, he won't be able to do it here. He gets lasted in. That'll be another kill coming in. T-Spark going to go down eventually. Don't really think he can escape. I think he realized it as well. The only person that escaped that one was Man of Steel, but that's a, what, a four for one trade in favor here of Epsilon. Now they're at leading 12 to two. Yikes. Uh, I, I, I expect we'll see a concede pretty soon. See, I was just thinking that. Would we see one? I mean, I don't 
I don't think HTK will concede. You don't think? Because with what's at, the yeah. at stake here, I mean, you don't want to lose your first game. You might as well fight to the end. See, I wouldn't be too upset just giving up this game right now because I know there's a loser bracket and, you know, providing they can win the next game because this looks unwinnable right now. Well, that's, I mean, we could say the same thing about the Wolves the Dragon Slayers game, right? That was true. Very, very true. And it's kind of a, a similar lineup, really, with H2K right now. Because they've got that Joker, they've got that Arcane Green Mountain. They have the potential to save and disrupt in those fights where they've got those ultimates. Because Dignitas, well, Zed, sorry, my correction, uh, had very similar picks to this on the Epsilon team. And though it was good at the start, it also sort of wore away later on. Mm -hmm. And the disruption of the Joker bombs and uh, Arcane Green Lantern coming in with the saves. It's, it, it could work, but I just don't see the team play right now. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I definitely agree with you on that one. One thing I will say, though, for H2K that I, I liked was we saw that the multi-man gank on the top lane against T-Spark. And what did uh, H2K do to respond? They pushed middle. They got a turret. They weren't able to take the second one, unfortunately. But if they keep getting caught like that with Talker, it's not going down for a, I believe, what, six time? Yeah, six yeah. time. They're not really have much of a chance here. they got to play smart. they got to play safe. And now they're 10,000 credits behind with a Leviathan being taken. Yeah, they just took Raider. Now they're taking Leviathan. They've got EMPs, health packs everywhere. And Zed, T-Spark coming in, trying to save. Cry's coming in as well. But they're, just, they're looking out for Souls, and they find him instantly and knock him down. I love that play there. Souls right at the back. Nobody could really see him, but they hunted him down. They knew the damage dealer was somewhere close. It's those cameras they had placed. They yep. spot him up perfectly in an easy last over the wall. So have them to pick up this Leviathan here. And Epson looking for the finish potentially off this. They, they could have, they had the picks of who they wanted to kill there. And I think that was beautiful play just to quickly switch to that damage dealer. Even though he wasn't really in a position to do that much damage. But it's just, it's that thinking that's always going to be in their fights that shows how strong Epsilon are. It goes back to the, the question of what's the protection for souls? Besides his afterburner. There is maybe none. Mr. Punchy, maybe the Comet, which Man of Steel unfortunately wasn't in that fight, and maybe the pull out of T Spark. Like that's the only real thing you're gonna have. Like as soon as a lineup like Epsilon happens, the first thing I think everybody should start building is pretty much entropy Aegis's and sort of get that that pep, that shield bubble, that skill block. If you can do that, I think it would nullify a lot of that potential damage that they can output with those massive controlled stuns. Because they're going to be trying to position themselves to knock away those bubbles, and that can give you opportunities to then get in and get the team fight that you want. But nobody's even started to build any form of entropy agencies from the start, so. And they're not going to now, they just don't have enough time or enough credits. Mm -hmm. And if they, if anything, the downside now is that they do build it, they won't have damage that they're going to need um, to even have a chance in these fights. They'll try to out tank them, yeah, but. I mean, I guess you could always. I always look at it this way. If they can survive the initial combo of the lockdown trying to burst one person, then they yeah. might be able to drag the fight out long enough to win. But that's always really difficult to kind of uh, to guess here. But either way, t square gets a pull on Endless. Can be forced to back away. Tavi coming from the side looking for something. And he will get on the Clockworks, and that's most certainly him dead again here. But he does actually get the ultimate out of Arcane Green Lantern. He's going to survive this one. And that will force Epsilon back. He had to pop everything there for it, though. He popped his invulnerability. Then, obviously, Arcane Green Lantern came in for the save. Yeah, they're spending a lot just to get out of those skirmishes. And this means that Epsilon can just take free stuff now. And they still got a lot of plays behind them with the, uh, the Leviathan shield and also the meteorite drop and also EMP. This could be a dampener already. They got two EMPs, actually. They do. And Souls, in the meantime, was pushing that bottom lane. Did take down a turret, but is it just a little bit too late here? There's uh, one more tier two turret to take mid lane, one more tier two bottom. Then it's yep. just those dampeners to keep... H2K alive here, and Epsilon looks like they're grouping to push middle. They're looking for that last turret. They are, and this could be potentially H2K's last chance to do anything about it. They need to prevent this from happening. If not, if they lose too many casualties in this next fight, this is game in my opinion. They're, they're going to just push Epsilon for the win, unless they got too much damage upon their team, but wait and find out. I mean, they've got everything to play for now, especially with two MPs, Meteorite Drop, Leviathan Shield. Do you think they're going to EMP this one? I would I would expect so with two EMPs. It'd be a waste not to. If they want to start a fight, that is. And the thing is, in this enclosed area, it's really easy to land that meteorite drop. Yes, it is. 
very much so, especially with the Wonder Woman, who ha actually has the meteorite drop, so she can coordinate it perfectly. And it's a little bit low on HP, though. He's going to be forced to back away, and I think, you know, HDK is going to hold them off for a little bit of time here. So at least delay that push onto that turret to turret middle for now. But of course, those buffs off of Ithan, those, those deployables, they're still going to be there when they come back. Yeah. I feel as if there should be a timer on there. Just so that you're forced to use it at some point. You can't just wait with them entirely. Mm -hmm. It kind of slows down the pace of the game. It, if you have them at a particular point and you have a timer, you know that you have to use it and you're forced to fight with them at a particular point. And I think that would have a lot more plays in it involved, you know? But that, that's just yeah. my opinion. No, I'd agree. I'd agree with that. I mean, it, it makes sense. We saw yesterday just. I was at Wolves, they had them defensively. Yeah. They put they up a they were defending, and they obviously the other team was, or uh, Zed wasn't going to dive into them against that. Well, they couldn't. If they did, they'd just take far too much damage and eventually just gave opportunities for Wolves to give get some credits back, really, for a good five minutes. And in the meantime, here you can see now Sun regrouping up. And Timon pushing bottom, looking for T Spark here. It's just Jitsu and Tavi to try to kill him. Sorry, he might go down from this one. He's getting pretty low here. He gets locked down from Ultra Atavi. And Jitsu as well popping his. And they're committing a lot for T-Spark, but they're not going to pick the kill. No, but they got backup coming in from behind. Kips comes in, locks down the ultimate. T-Spark now going to go down. Cry's going to go down. That's two down here for H2K. Also, this tower as well. Sander is here. And this is a dampener, surely. There's I really like that three. EMP. Yeah. Like they EMP'd it coming in so they wouldn't take any damage from the turret, so they would have more health to push into this dampener now. Yeah. Just really well played here by Epsilon. And now that this or that second MP they have, they could easily take this one. Yeah, meteorite drop still up, shield still up. Uh there is gonna be a concede surely any second now. I mean they, they can't even start a fight. I mean they've only, they only got two clockwork obviously died somewhere else. Oh, Kim's going in. EMP coming down, looking for a kill. They pick up another here, and the ultimate coming out of Mecha Wonder Souls isn't really doing that much damage. But either way, the Power Quartet first one gonna fall here. Number two gonna fall shortly after, it seems. But they're diving on the Souls. They look for the kill, and they will have that as well here. Now Cry Clockworks back alive. T-Spark coming up in a second's time. But I don't think those three men can defend against the five-man squad of Epsilon attacking the Power Core. Yep. GG. Well played, Epsilon. Incredibly strong throughout that game. Brilliant picks. Uh, lockdown control on pretty much that mid. Straight away secured them everything on the map. Yeah, Epsilon, I mean, that's what we saw them do yesterday. They started off early, they started off strong, and they completely took that snowball through, uh, through with them throughout the rest of the game. And just look at the scoreboard really quickly. We had Tavi have 11 assists, zero deaths. Like, let me just break this down for you. So there was two kills on the side of H2K. They were both on a Sander, who went four, two, and eight, who had, uh, actually didn't even have the highest amount of credits in the team. It was actually Kim's who had it at 11,000. Uh, but you had two deaths only here. On the other side, you had four deaths for T-Spark, four deaths yeah. for Souls, four deaths for uh, Cry, seven for Clockworks, two for Man of Steel, who had the least deaths of his team. They just couldn't get anything going. The pit comp was a little bit too strong. They got snowballed early on, and HK.